Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. It's our final day here in Melbourne. So sad. It is sad, but it's starting to get cold. So we're getting so, the heck out yeah, of here. So we're fun with leaving. Just kidding. I'm really sad to leave, but I'm excited for warmer weather. Yes, but before we leave, we are on a mission to just have like our perfect day in Melbourne. So we've looked up a bunch of cool stuff that we're going to squeeze in today. Mm -hmm. It's going to be awesome. It's cool. A lot of the stuff we're doing is actually free. So it's going to be a pretty affordable day in Melbourne as well. First thing we're doing is not going to be that affordable. We're going to go to brunch at this place right here called Hash. When we were doing our market tour the other day, some guy just struck up a conversation with us and was recommending all kinds of places to go around the town mm -hmm. and he recommended this yes it should have amazing brunch and amazing coffee two of the things we are after today yes. i am so hungry i cannot wait for it let's do it so we got some cold brew it is very dark yeah, and allison delicious. already tasted hers <laughs> It's really nice, but we forgot that the whole reason um, the fellow recommended this place was for their hot chocolate. Apparently they serve it with 85% dark chocolate, so it would be really thick, I think, and dark. And then they put fairy floss on top, which is... Um, I think it's just cotton candy, yeah, maybe? Yeah, like cotton candy. But fairy floss is a much better name for it, don't yeah. you think? We're debating whether we should get it for dessert. I don't know. We'll see how uh, lunch goes. I think we're going to hold off on the hot chocolate, but to give you an idea of what it looks like with the floss stuff on it, these people over here just ordered it. It looks pretty over the top. I think you're supposed to just dump the hot chocolate on top of it, and then it melts in there. So do you think it's like flavor floss or just... Literally sugar. Yeah, it, it just, must just, it just be... looks unflavored, doesn't it? Our food has arrived and it looks amazing. So I stuck with the old trusty shakshuka, which is my absolute favorite breakfast or brunch in the entire world. I ended up getting a dish called the duffel, which is apple braised pulled duck and an herb waffle down there, and then a little salad on the side. But check it out, we've got some poached eggs on the top with I think just some. Uh, Hollandaise, citrus hollandaise it says on the top. That's gonna be good. They have a whole bunch of duck centered dishes here. I think you made the right choice. Let's pop this egg open. Woo, yeah buddy, check that out. Oh man. <laughs> I'm so excited about this, it smells so good. Let's get a piece with some egg on there, some waffle. Oh, it really just falls apart. Wow, it's a really delicate waffle. Get a little bit of duck on there. There we go, that's a bite. Mm. It's good. It's really good. The duck is really oily and nice and savory. Then you get a little bit of sweetness from the waffle, but there's no like syrup or anything like that. It's just the batter, I guess, has a little sweetness in it. And the egg is perfect. The hollandaise sauce isn't like an overwhelming flavor or anything. Absolutely perfect breakfast. I think I'm glad that I didn't get the shakshuka. I think it's going to be good, but I don't know if I can top this. Yeah, now that you're eating that, I'm a bit jealous. I love I mean, this, this looks good too though. But I get it all the time. But I think this one will be a little bit different. It has a whole bunch of goat cheese on top and then a bunch of chorizo in there, some kale, my favorite, and then eggs and it's all stewed in this amazing tomato sauce. Woo-wee! Let's see if mine's as juicy and runny as yours. Nope. Yeah. So much <laughs> but good, it looks though. great. I'm scared of smoking. I'm scared it's gonna be hot. That is amazing. It's super savory and really nicely stewed. The chorizo has a lot of flavor to it. It's not super spicy though. And with that goat cheese in there, it adds a nice little punch to it. And then I've got no one, not two, but three pieces of toast with it. Yeah, baby. You just need some Vegemite. Oh, <laughs> I, don't I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Brunch was delicious. Now we are going to go explore some of the laneways here in Melbourne. I think I read that there are over 40 laneways and arcades, which are just little, I guess, kind of narrow streets. And some of them, like this one we're on, Hardware Lane, have a bunch of bars and shops and restaurants. Others have a lot of graffiti down them. Some are just gross, I think. But <laughs> we're gonna try to find some of the coolest ones today and show them off to y'all. Hey. 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 Thank you so much. Nailed it. Yeah, I'm like really professional. No big deal. We are currently walking through one of the more crowded lanes. It's called Center Way. Center 
place. Center place. But uh, this one has a lot more people in it. Lots of shops, restaurants, all kinds of stuff, as you can see. It's a very and, fun vibe up here. Yeah, and it's just a short little alley. But then if you go across the street, there should be another alley like this and then another alley like this. So it's kind of fun. Just our idea is that we're just going to kind of go from one to the other and see how different they all are. This one here is called De Graves. And you can see it's quite different. It has just a row of chairs and tables in the middle. A bunch of people eating. Everyone so far has been uniquely different. It's very cool, even though they're just like right across the street from each other. Kind of makes me sad that we already had our coffee and breakfast. Everything looks and smells so amazing. Public transportation in Melbourne is actually amazing, and they have trams that take you everywhere. But in the center of the city, the Standing CBD. A take a moment to hold on. They have a, a system of free trams that just takes you around the center. It's called the free tram zone. The free tram zone, which is very handy if you are sick of walking but not done shopping. Just make sure you pay close attention when they're announcing the stops because they'll tell you when you're exiting the free tram zone. You don't want to get busted. This lane, I think it's Hosier, Hosier Lane. Not 100% sure, but it's way different than the other ones we've been down. This one has no outside seating and a lot of graffiti so it's mostly i guess just for strolling down it looks like there's still bars on here so you can still get a good drink but a very different vibe and lots of people taking selfies ah, it's a selfie. this is the selfie street here <laughs> taking a little break. We've been walking all over the city. We came over to, I think it's called Federation Square, which has a great 360 view of the city. You can see all the different big buildings down here. I actually came here because I thought there were gonna be food trucks and I was gonna get a snack, but I don't see any here. But there are a bunch of people out here and a couple restaurants around us and everyone's just chilling. Have a good day. Yeah, the weather really got nice and the sun is coming out. It's turned into quite a lovely day. The vibe in the city so far has been great. It is very clean mm -hmm. and uh, lots of really cool architecture and old buildings, all kinds of stuff. Lots of shopping, so mm -hmm. it's really cool to just kind of stroll around and check everything out. And I also read that Melbourne is considered the most livable city in the world. In the freaking yeah. world, which I get it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It also has one of the lowest crime rates in the world, which is great. So that means safe, it's a good mm -hmm. place to live in, it's kept very clean. It is also very artistic. You've seen a lot of the street art that they have around. They also have a lot of museums. We've seen ads for different art shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They also have art on the trams. Some of the trams have oh, wraps yeah. of artwork They're on They're really them. cool. But I am still in need of a snack, and I think we're getting pretty thirsty now that it's well into the afternoon. Yes. So we saw a little bar from when we were um, on the bridge a bit ago. I think we're gonna go check it out and see what it's about. There we are, we'll see you there. The bar that we came to is called Ponyfish Island. It's attached to this bridge that goes across the uh, river here. And I don't know if it's really more much of an island, but it's built into one of the platforms of the little pillars of the bridge. It's yeah, cool. it's like a pedestrian bridge. We were way over there and I was like, I think I see people down there. So I Googled it and sure enough, it's a whole bar. It's yeah. very cool. It's pretty easy to miss, but uh, definitely worth checking out. It's a really cool vibe. The beer and the cocktails and stuff are a little expensive, but I guess, you know, you're paying for the experience, but they also have some snacks. We got a whole heap of nachos here. These look like Doritos. <laughs> I think yeah. they might be. But man, they've got some uh, meat on there, some beans, chili, I guess, sour cream, jalapenos, and then some lime. Man, this looks gluttonous, <laughs> but delicious. Oopsie. <laughs> to Melbourne. To and, Melbourne. And our, bad decisions. Our final day. <laughs> well, only one. That's not a bad decision, right? I guess nachos are, though. Yeah, the nachos are. Oopsie. come down south of the city to the entrance to the famous Luna Park. Look at this thing. I feel like I've seen this all my life, yeah. this little face. 
I had no idea it was here in Melbourne. This yeah. is awesome. But there's a whole theme park inside, which if you have a whole day to make of it, definitely recommend going in there and checking it out. I wish we had an, an extra day here in Melbourne. They definitely have like pretty amazing family passes that you can get and have a full day of fun here. It's also right on the water mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of little shops and uh, there's a Ferris wheel and everything. So you could easily spend a whole day here. But the real reason we came down here is because just a little ways up the beach, apparently up colony of penguins moved in in the 70s and every night right after sunset they come back home so you can watch them all run across the beach hopefully i mean it's after sunset so it'll be dark but i'm hoping we can capture some of the cuteness we actually read that this is the oldest continually operated roller coaster in the world in the freaking world that's, that's pretty crazy. awesome it is I, very wooden though <laughs> yeah very rickety it makes a lot of nasty sounds as it goes by so i'm sure they keep up with it but i might be a little scared to ride it <laughs> But it's cool, it kind of goes along the outside of the park. Yeah, I bet you get great views from up there of the ocean and the city, yeah. it'd be pretty cool. I think that we just found some parakeets up in this palm tree. They are the most colorful little birds I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. And they are very chatty. Now Allison, I know you were thinking about handling the penguins. No, don't but do it. What if they ask for a hug? Then can I do it? Kindly refuse. I think we were about an hour early for sunset and I'm very glad we got here now because there's already a huge crowd of people out here. So definitely come early to get your spot. You guys, the penguins have ninja their ways in. Somehow they bypass us and are already in the rocks behind us and they are making the cutest little noises. I'm really hoping one's gonna pop up in just a second. made it back to our place. We did manage to see a few penguins, which was great, but not as many as I thought I would see. There was just such a crowd there that we saw them coming in, but you couldn't really maneuver on the pier very well. So you yeah. were kind of stuck in whatever area you got. And I think the penguins come in at random intervals and in a big group. So I think you just have to really look out for them to come right to your section, mm -hmm. yeah. but we saw them. But I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us on our final day here in Australia. We had a blast, super chill day, just exploring Melbourne, which is exactly what we wanted to do for our final day. Yes, exactly. And we mm. didn't actually end up going to one place that's very cool that you guys should all go to. It's the Queen Victoria Market or the Vic Market. We actually went there a couple videos ago and we had an amazing day there. They have so much food and so many mm. cool little stalls and everything. You can do all sorts of shopping for everything you want. Yeah, so if you're watching this video looking for things to do in Melbourne, highly recommend that market. Um, also, just research some of the other markets as well, because that one we can say is definitely worth going to, but there are some more low-key, so smaller, yeah. maybe more local feeling kind of markets that you can definitely check out as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to do it for our adventures here in Australia. We've got a couple, uh, I was going to say Australian beers, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> are they Australian? James Squire, the first fleet convict who went on to become Australia's first brewer. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> okay. I guess way to turn your life no idea, around. Yes, we're going to drink this, probably get packed up, watch some mindless movie, probably Vegas themed, because we're going to <laughs> Vegas tomorrow. Very and excited. that's going to be our night. Stay tuned for a very crazy travel day tomorrow. I think it'll be yeah. over 24 straight hours of travel. It's going to be brutal. Ugh. Wish us luck. Good night, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>